Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. Welcome to Monday. I'm Dave Adams. Glad you are with Valley Talk today. We've got uh, three topics that we are going to be talking about. We're making some notes about Mark Workhoven's newscast there a moment ago and see if we can get those items on the future shows. America and marijuana today. There are people, some people that are saying that we should look at legalizing marijuana, maybe as a fundraiser, maybe as a revenue raiser, I guess I should say, and that it really doesn't hurt. It's kind of like drinking a beer. And I know you've heard people that have said that. Well, we have Jer uh, Jerry Jesfold with Serenity Delane in the studios, and he's saying that is absolutely not a good idea. He does totally not agree with that. We'll be talking about his thoughts about that as well. But first of all, we're going to be talking to uh, Mike Punjakar with Honor Flight. He is with the Mid Willamette Valley Hub. We'll talk a little bit about what Honor Flight is and what they're doing. And especially there's a, there's a push on, on getting something, getting a movie put into or shown at the Albany Theater. And we'll be talking about that with him in just a moment. Honor Flight, the movie, the final mission is what we're trying to get shown in Albany. And our third guest today, uh, Visiting Angels, we'll have Amanda in here. They've won an award for uh, something they've done, and we'll be talking to Amanda about that. So first of all, let's go to the phones and talk to Mike Punjakar. Mike, glad to have you with us once again on Valley Talk. Glad to be back with you, Dave. Honor Flight, the movie, The Final Mission. What are we trying to do here? We have an opportunity to see uh, a movie that's a full-length feature movie uh, that will follow the story of four World War II veterans, uh, give some of their background on what they experienced uh, 70 years ago in defending our country, uh, follow them as they prepare for and go through an actual honor flight back to Washington, D.C. Uh, people who uh, watch this movie will actually get to go with them and a group of veterans to the World War II Memorial uh, to see some of the other memorials, memorials that we visit while we're back there, the Korean War Memorial, uh, Vietnam War Memorial, Army, Air Force, Navy Memorial, Marine Corps Memorial. We go to Arlington National Cemetery for the changing of the guard. It's, uh, it's a full-length movie. It follows uh, the families of these veterans, and it, it, it shows what a powerful experience this is. In, in recognizing the service that these men and women gave to our country 70 years ago. So why do we need to show? Why do we? Why do you feel like we need to show show that movie in Albany? Uh, in Albany, we really need support from Albany. You had uh, 10 or 11 of your World War II veterans make honor flights at this point and experience it, but we still have others that are that we're trying to get the word out to and and get them to get their applications in, and also to raise the funds that we need to get these men and women back there. They travel free on these flights. So the money that's raised uh, through donations is uh, is to cover the expenses to get these, uh, these aging veterans back there. They're all in their mid-80s to mid-90s, and literally their time is running out. If we're going to get the uh, opportunity to recognize their service, at all before they pass away. We need to do it now. One of the challenges in selling tickets, uh, my understanding is that you are pre-selling all of the tickets. All of the tickets to this movie have to be sold online. How does that work? That is, what, do you, what do you need people to do? How much do the tickets cost? Okay, tickets are $10. Uh, we get a, uh, a small percentage, if you will, of the ticket sales, but when people go online, which is the only way to order tickets, uh, there is a screen that they go to where they have an opportunity to make donations to the South Willamette Valley Honor Flight Hub. All of those donations minus a credit card fee come directly to this hub to help cover expenses for these trips. They need to go to www.honorflightthemovie.com. All one word, honorflightthemovie.com. And they, uh, they can open up a link that will say, see the film. They scroll through all the states where this is going on. We're not the only ones, but they go to Oregon. Right off the top in Oregon, they'll find both screenings for Albany, and they need to click on whichever one they want to go. But we need to get these tickets ordered by, I think it's 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, in order to confirm the showing. We still need 37 tickets to be ordered for the afternoon showing, and we need 105 orders for the evening showing. So we've got a lot of work to do in a little time. So, again, the website, honorflightthemovie.com. Correct. And it is sold out in Springfield. Both showings in Springfield this Thursday are sold out. I'm pleased to say that. And we're hoping that things will come to life quickly in Albany so that we can be up there next Wednesday and greet people as they come to see a movie that, quite frankly, they'll never forget. 
if we sell enough tickets to meet the threshold, if you want to go, you still have to buy tickets online. All mo all ticket sales to this showing in Albany and the other locations have to be purchased That's online. correct. They, they are considered by the theaters a private screening, so there's no at-the-door sales. Everything has to be in advance. Tickets can be ordered online up to four hours before the showtime. How many tickets, again, are we short in Albany? Uh, 37 for the afternoon showing at 2 p.m., and 105 for the 7.30 p.m. showing. All right. And, Mike, we're going to be talking to you again uh, at this time segment in Valley Talk Show tomorrow. Now, the deadline for getting these sold, pre-sold is tomorrow noon. Is that correct? I'll, I'll verify that when I call you tomorrow, but I believe it's 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So we will right. check with you again tomorrow at the same time to see where we are and how close we are to, to meeting that threshold. And Mike, thanks, be back. thank you for all you do for veterans, for Honor Flight, and uh, to make this movie um, known in the public and get it here to Albany and other points here in the Mid-Willamette Valley. Appreciate your support, Dave. Okay, we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Honor, Flight, tomorrow. Honor Flight, the movie. Let's listen to the trailer and uh, tell you, and do will have a chance to hear some of the story about what this is all about. come to life was absolutely amazing. It exceeded every expectation that everybody ever had. They came home with their duffel bags and put them in the back hall and never talked about it again. And then we found out that we were going to Iwo Jima. When I was liberated, I only weighed about 70 pounds. There's only three of us that survived. Your heart just goes off. Oh. It took 60 years for us to build a memorial to these guys. They never got the welcome home that they deserve. He has cancer. He kept saying, I'm going to be strong enough to make it to the World War II memorial. We fly World War II veterans to see their memorial at no cost to them. I'm Bob Dole and my wife Elizabeth, we come out here a lot. We've got to let everybody know the sacrifices made by that generation. You never forget it. You never forget it. The ones that didn't come back are the heroes. That's one day in their life they'll never forget. That's what it's all about. I met Ed. I never <laughs> knew he was alive. And... <laughs> we will never, ever forget. Honor flights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The final mission, and again, we're trying to get this shown in Albany. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for the service to your country. HonorFlightTheMovie.com is the website. A powerful story. Um, uh, these soldiers are described as the world's greatest generation, and uh, just to hear their stories about these guys that were in Iwo Jima and so on and so forth, going back to Washington, D.C., and, and some of these guys, you know, they're old. They're 90 years old, upper 80s. And they're not going to be living much longer, which is why the push is on on, on the Honor Flight program to get more and more of these uh, soldiers back to Washington, D.C. to see the honor that the nation is paying for their efforts in World War II. So we'll be checking again with Mike Punjakar tomorrow and see where we are in selling tickets for Honor Flight. Let's change gears here. Let's talk about uh, marijuana in America. In the studios, Jerry Gesfold, Manager, Employer Services, Serenity Lane. Thanks for being with us once again on Valley Talk. Thanks, Dave. It's nice to be here. Okay, marijuana. We're seeing some states, like Washington State, opening the door and having uh, legalized stores, state stores. Recreational where you can use. Yep. Recreational use of marijuana. Mm -hmm. You can legally sell it in the state of Washington and buy it. Some people are saying, oh, come on, Dave, marijuana, it's kind of like drinking a can of beer. It's not that bad. And you're saying... Well, nuts. you know, I, in terms of, of uh, good, bad, I mean, uh, all of the drugs that create an altered state of consciousness have a payback. I mean, there's a, you know, you, you hear the same thing with prescription drugs. I mean, it's, a, it's side effects that occur as a result of changing you know, God's natural uh, biochemistry of the brain. I mean, that's what you're doing. You're altering the biochemistry of the brain. Um, that having been said, you know, marijuana has been around for 
thousands of years. I mean, it's not it's nothing new. Uh, but somebody, you know, sometime decided that they'd try smoking it, and they got high, and the word got out. Um, in fact, marijuana was legal in the United States in the early 1900s, and then um, they passed some laws that made it illegal um, in about 1918, 1919, something like that. I, I don't know the exact year. Um, and what has happened, you know, is, is starting in 1998, at least here in the state of Oregon, uh, voters passed an initiative that made it uh, legal to consume marijuana for medicinal purposes, for certain covered medical conditions. Um, that program, along with a lot of the other programs around the United States, and there's about 18 states now that have uh, the, the ability to, to authorize, or they author have authorized use of marijuana for medicinal purposes. Um, <clears throat> in Oregon in particular, that program has been in my opinion, vastly abused. Uh, you have more than the amounts that are being, uh, you know, that are that are legal being trafficked. I mean, in the last six to twelve months, we've seen a number of law enforcement stops on I-5 in particular, but also 97 in Central Oregon, um, where people are carrying in their automobiles 50, 60, 70, 100 pounds of marijuana, which far exceed what the law allows for. Let's so. talk about the dangers of marijuana. Why are you so concerned about this particular Well, it's drug? a fat-soluble substance. The THC, which is the active ingredient of marijuana, is fat-soluble. The brain is the single fattiest tissue in the body. Um, that having been said, it, it, it has a propensity. Now, advocates for the drug and those that are in favor of the drug will say that this isn't true, but I've seen it happen too many times. It's called um, basically the emotivational syndrome. And you get people that, you know, the lights are on, but nobody's home. <laughs> and and that can be extremely dangerous in the workplace, which is where my expertise comes in and working with employers and drug-free workplace programs. And And so the problem of moving closer and closer to open legalization in, in, in two states, Colorado and Washington now, it opens the door for others to certainly try to, and, and, and it's really important to distinguish the difference between the state laws and the federal laws, because the federal laws still call for it to be illegal. So if you have a commercial licensed driver who has to answer to federal laws, and those guys that are driving trucks, there's no exception. If you're, if you have THC in your system in a random or a for cause or an unannounced test, then you know you get your CDL taken away from you until you either clean up your act or, or don't drive. So what about the state of Washington? Now, obviously, we're here in Oregon. Yep. Uh, I think there's some concern, and quite frankly, I just want to say in case people might misconstrue my position on this is I don't know I don't believe we should legalize this uh, right. at all but what about Washington state you've got small amounts authorized Less the, than state, an ounce. Mm -hmm. the state's going to be selling it in their stores so for an employer let's say they're not a CDL truck driver but let's say they're a manufacturer there's yep. something where you need to be kind of spot on in what you're doing to be able to stop the machine that's right uh, what position does that put them in as far as requiring drug tests and if they have well the problem that's going to arise in my opinion and I'm and, and there's still an awful lot of unanswered questions around this issue the, the feds the drugs are last week indicated that they will be uh, uh, legally, you know, enforcing the federal law on people that, uh, and, and you'll be, be licensed by the state in Washington to authorize you to possess it to sell. Um, I'm not sure whether they're calling them dispensaries or not, but certainly under the medical marijuana programs, they're all called dispensaries. What the drugs are has made clear is that if that happens, we will be arresting those folks. Uh, and they've made that, you know, uh, they made that public statement last week. And that's been part of what the uncertainty is now where the states have said yes, the feds are saying no, and whether or not the feds are going to, you know, basically Obama in, in his public statement about it is that, you know, we're not going to go after somebody that's possessing less than an ounce for personal use. But if you've got somebody that's marketing it and trafficking in it, in essence, we're going to uh, we're we're going to take an, you know take exception to that. And and so as we roll this out, and and it'll be months yet before we really know the answer to that. But if they do what they say they're going to do, it's going to create a real big dis disconnect. And and. And the reasons I thought this would be a good topic, it's been in the news a lot. I right. mean, our legislature is certainly looking at that 
that issue right now in terms of the possible legalization. In, in our last ballot, Oregon was the third state that had a ballot that was uh, an, uh, attempting to legalize it. 47% of the voters voted in favor of it. So they only have about four more percent to go before they exceed the 50%, which would make it you know, illegal in our state as well. And I think one of the things that prevented it from being legalized is people looked at the law and there was no restriction as to the amount. Both Colorado and Washington State said less than an ounce. We said no limit. So you could possess a, a large quantity of it with no penalty as a result of the way the law was written in the state of Oregon. You could have a semi-truck of it. Conceivably. <laughs> and and so that having been said as well, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a real strong debate that's going on at the federal level. I, and just so your listeners understand, there's a difference between a Schedule 1 and a Schedule 2 drug. And marijuana fits into a Schedule 1 drug as a federal, uh, under the federal law. Schedule 1 means that there's no recognized medical use for the drug. Heroin is a Schedule 1 drug. Schedule 2 drug means that there's recognized medical use for the drug, but there's also a propensity for abuse and, and dependence. Uh, there's a strong uh, national effort in place now as we speak to change it from a Schedule 1 to a Schedule 2 drug. State of Oregon changed it from a Schedule 1 to a Schedule 2 within our state. So we're one of the few and very... I, I'm, I'm, my, my mind, I don't know of another state that has done this, that they, the Board of Pharmacy had voted to change it from a Schedule 1 to a Schedule 2 drug. So in, in the state of Oregon, it's a Schedule 2 drug. Is marijuana a gateway drug? Just well, you know, that's a, that's a good question, and it's one that is oftentimes answered. There's a lot of people that feel that it is. Um, I know years ago, there was a, when we had a, a significant cocaine problem in this country, there was a, a hotline, 1-800-COCAINE was the name of it, and they did a study. Um, and of the people that were calling in about information and also treatment options for cocaine dependency, they asked them the question, which drug did you use first, marijuana or cocaine? And marijuana was uh, a yes answer in 93% of the cases. Now, that doesn't mean that 93% of the people that use marijuana go on to, you know, harder drugs. But, you know, there is that potential for that. I, as I was mentioning to you before we went on the air, I, number one gateway drug, in my opinion, is tobacco. I mean, it's... it's uh, but I'll tell you another scary statistic, Dave. In the state of Oregon, 8th and 11th graders are more likely to smoke marijuana than they are tobacco. That's Why is scary. That? Why is well, that? because marijuana gets them high. And, uh, you know, they're getting the message about tobacco and the dangers to tobacco, but yet they're smoking marijuana. People will ask me if I think marijuana is addicting. I answer it with a question. Do you think tobacco is addicting? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's addicting. Well, you know, you're smoking a substance that's very similar to tobacco in terms of the uh, substances that are in... in, in the, like there's more uh, carcinogenic uh, substances in marijuana than there is tobacco. So it's... it's uh, it's a it's a widely accepted drug today versus say twenty five years ago, um, and so the, the 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 issue then becomes one just like we were talking about politics. You know the the yeas and the nays, and and there's going to be strong debates back and forth. You know in terms of uh, whether yes or no we should do it or not. Seems like there's a number of different areas: gun control, yeah. legalization, uh, the number size of magazines, death or with dignity. I mean, you know, we're all. setting up a, a conflict or or yep. a. <laughs> We're setting up a conflict Terminal. between the federal government and the states. Yeah. And there's going to be a, on some of these issues, which are very hotly contested, federal government's going to say one thing, the states are going to say another, yep. and we're going to come to loggerheads. Yes, that's right. And and again, some of that's going to be played out around the marijuana issue now uh, between Colorado and Washington in regards to... The other thing is, when, when do you establish or determine when somebody's driving under the influence? You know, marijuana is usually measured in the urine. THC is measured in the urine, where alcohol is measured in the blood. So when you do a breathalyzer, the breathalyzer requites the amount of alcohol in the blood. And, you know, we've said that impairment occurs, take a commercial driver out of service for 24 hours at 0 0.02 in the blood. <coughs> and yet we've got 0 0.08 as the legal level of intoxication for while driving. So the state of Washington has actually gone to a blood test for uh, marijuana impairment drive, impaired driving. And they're saying five nanograms of marijuana, THC, in the blood will equate to a charge of driving while impaired. So, Interesting. Jerry, uh, uh, Jerry <coughs> Gesfold, Serenity Lane, here on Valley Talk. More about this in just a moment. Winter in Oregon. 
Some of us have been inside so much we feel a little bottled up. There's a perfect solution. The Newport Seafood and Wine Festival, presented by Chinook Winds Casino Resort. The original and still the best. Since 1978, the Newport Seafood and Wine Festival has attracted visitors from around the world to the Central Oregon coast. Try out your French with the 2013 theme, Cirque du Vina, Seafood and Wine. You'll have a chance to sample some of the most sumptuous, mouth-watering seafood, and you'll discover why the wine world comes to Oregon when they're searching for excellence. Booth after booth of the best seafood and wine. Commercial wineries competing with each other, as well as an amateur wine competition. The Newport Seafood and Wine Festival, February 21st through the 24th. Don't crab about being bottled up all winter. Swing out to Newport and enjoy. For tickets and other information, visit seafoodandwine.com. For too long, we've spent our weekend searching for the right tool when we should have been using the right tool. It's time to go to Ace. We'll find Craftsman Tools the second we walk in. We can fix that wobbly table and still have time for televised sports. Get your weekend back. Ace is the place for Craftsman Tools. And Economy Supply is your Ace place in the Mid-Valley to get them. Economy Supply Building and Contractor Center, where Highway 34 becomes Tangent Street in Lebanon. Ace, the helpful place. A hasty trip to retrieve an item from a third-story attic began an unexpected journey for Hope Craybill of Shed. Mrs. Craybill slipped on the pull-down ladder and fell over the second-floor banister to the bottom floor below. With mounting medical costs to treat her broken vertebra, friends and neighbors are taking this opportunity to help. A fundraising auction is planned for March 2nd from 1 to 5 p.m. at the Halsey Mennonite Church. For more information on how you can donate goods or services, contact the Gregories at 541-491-3529. A good web page is a must sales tool for today's businesses. Sandy Am Communications will put together an efficient, thorough web page that is right for your business. Sandy Am Communications knows how to bring customers to your door and your phone. Call them at 541 223 7444. Put Sandy Am Communications to work for you. Call them at 541 223 7444 or visit sandyamcommunications.com. Home Care Pulse, a company which measures client and employee satisfaction, has announced that Visiting Angels has been awarded the Best of Home Care distinction. Here at Visiting Angels, we are so honored to receive this award for a second year in a row, said Mark Wang, owner of Visiting Angels of Willamette Valley. We feel so blessed to have such dedicated and compassionate caregivers. To find out more about the Best of Home Care award, please visit bestofhomecare.com. Contact Visiting Angels at 541-928-2061. Health Talk with Dr. Bob Martin, Sunday mornings on News Talk 1580, KGAL. Welcome back to Valley Talk. One of the things we do need to mention is we are once again on this show giving away a $10 gift certificate for Quiznos. Taste on us. Simply go to my email address, dave at kgal.com, and put Quiznos, taste on us on the subject line, or call the radio station at 926-KGAL or 451-KGAL and say you want to be put into the Quiznos Taste on Us drawing uh, into the show here in about 30 minutes. We're going to draw a name out of the hat and that lucky person will get a delicious uh, or d gift certificate of $10 and you can use that to buy a delicious sub or subs at Quiznos in Albany. It's right next to the uh, Novax restaurant location and right next to the former G.I. Joe Sporting Goods. Uh, thanks to Dale and the crew at Quiznos in Albany for being a part of the Valley Talk family here on KGAL. Quiznos taste on us. 30 more minutes to get your submissions in. So, good luck with that. Jerry Gesfold with Surrounding the Lane. We're talking about marijuana. Jerry, since this was legalized for recreational use, small amounts in Washington, Colorado, think it's going to happen in Oregon? Well, there's certainly going to be ongoing and continued attempts to uh, get it legalized. I mean, there's discussions now going on at the legislat legislative level um, about the topic. Um, it will be presented to the voters, I, I, I would think, no later than um, in uh, 2014, um, the ballot. <clears throat> um, and, and I think what, what they will learn from Colorado and Washington is a better wording of the initiative, which will make it more palatable to more people. Um, and, and, and yes, I think there's a high probability that that will happen. Uh, now, the other thing that I need to probably qualify that with, Dave, is it kind of depends upon what happens 
as to the feds in Colorado and Washington. Um, if the feds take a pretty strong hand uh, at, uh, you know, what they're attempting to do there at the state level and, and, and start, you know, making arrests uh, on, under the federal law, um, that could slow things down uh, a bit. But I think it's something that really um, it is probably a matter of time before it's uh, legalized. What concerns should our listeners have about the possibility of legalizing it, even in small amounts in Oregon? Yeah, again, my, my issue uh, in dealing with employers is how employers are going to, you know, handle that. Um, I'm sure that there's still, there will be some uh, cases that will have to be heard in court, I'm sure, uh, as employers maybe take a more disciplinary approach, uh, you know, to somebody that tests positive for marijuana if they're testing for it. Uh, and subsequently, then an attorney will, you know, that is in favor of legalization will probably, you know, take it on as, as uh, contingently and, and not charge anything to, to represent uh, whoever that party is that's been terminated. And, and we've had two of those cases in Oregon under the medical marijuana that went all the way up to the Oregon Supreme Court. And it wasn't until May of 2010 that they finally decided at the state uh, Supreme Court that employers did not have to accommodate all the decisions that had been made up to that point, uh, both with B Bureau of Labor and Industry and the Oregon Court of Appeals had said, yes, employers do have to accommodate and engage in dialogue the same they w way they would any other medication that's being taken for a qualifying medical condition. So that that creates, you know, a concern for me. The, the other issue too, Dave, that I think I might mention is that, that there's always, we always hear the, the, uh, the statement because states and communities and counties are short on money and so if you tax it then boy you know we're gonna have this windfall of money there's an element of truth to that but every study that's been done with tobacco and alcohol has shown that on average the dollar that every dollar that's taken in in tax revenue generates about an eight dollar eight times the cost adverse cost to society, hospitalizations, car wrecks, you know, all the kind of things that, uh, that those potential uh, harms will cause. So what would you say to the people who might be using marijuana from a medical standpoint and saying, you know, it's really helping me, I'm, and maybe they're even offended at the fact that we're speaking so strongly against it. Good question. I've testified in many of the hearings at the state level and I've been in, in a room with, you know, two, three hundred people and many of them are uh, proponents for the medical use of marijuana and they're, they're very sick people and I have no problem with that. If I were asked the question, do I think it has some medicinal value, certainly enough people have indicated that it helps them, then I'm, I don't think we should take that away from them. By the same token, we need to be cautious as to how we proceed so that it just doesn't become an open door and, and become... Because, uh, mark my words, I'm, I'm not against the medical marijuana program. I'm, because, I'm against what it's become. You know, when you've got... And, and this is not an exaggeration. When you've got thousands of pounds that are being distributed through the, throughout the country <clears throat> from growers that are growing for allegedly for medicinal use, um, th that's an issue. And, and that's an abuse that I think... Uh, that, that I would certainly... V vocally say, verbally say that I'm, I'm, I'm against that. It's very easy to sneak some out the back door on private sales. It, 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 it does. And, and uh, you know, as much as, I mean, that's been probably, you know, some of the publicity, the negative publicity to those people that are in favor of the program have been significant enough that it's harmed them in, 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 in terms of the movement towards the actual legalization. Although there's a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people that are incarcerated very severely so for this drug. And, and I I, you know, I think that's an overkill as well. I mean, in, term, in terms of punishment, um, it's not a methamphetamine. Dr the, the drug is not a drug that causes people to become psychotic, for the most part. But, you know, the, the other piece to that is is that there have been some studies done in Australia with adolescents. And uh, through the smoking of marijuana, uh, it has pushed them over, you know, to becoming psychotic. You know, paranoid schizophrenic. And, and uh, if there's a propensity for that or a potential for that, the drug does have that. Uh, there's documented evidence that there is that potential that it could push them, you know, to an actual full-blown psychotic episode. So we just have to be cautious, I think, and be sensible. I guess that would be my most significant parting message would be let's be sensible about this. <clears throat>
Are you treating in? No, obviously, don't mention any names. But are you treating anybody for marijuana addiction? Absolutely. That, that say, you know, I really liked it. it recreational use, but I can't stop. Absolutely. It. Absolutely. You know, it's it's. So what, like, what's and the people that are trying to quit? What's their motivation? Well, typically, there's some kind of consequence. I mean, so the consequence is the one that wakes them up to the fact that it's, you know, causing harm. And, and, and uh, you know, I don't think I've mentioned it on this show before, but I, I had a cocaine addict one time tell me, he says, I didn't have a problem with cocaine until I ran out of cocaine. You know, and the same thing is true whether it's tobacco or marijuana or whatever. If you're trying to quit because you're being driven by some kind of a crisis, whether it's a relationship, a marriage, or whatever else, um, and you find out that you can't, I mean, you're not able to, I mean, th that's addiction. And, and so, you know, it, it, the person thinks that they can get into, you know, uh, stop using anytime they want to. And, and I think it was Mark Twain that said, it, you know, regarding tobacco, you know, stop and smoke is easy. You know, I've done it hundreds of times. <laughs> you know? So it's stopping and staying stopped, you know, that makes the difference. All so, right. Interesting. Thank What's you, your contact information well, for Well, here locally, it's 541-928-9681. And we certainly have a an extensive web uh, page, www.serenitylane.org. And then we've also got a blog, uh, serenitylaneblog.wordpress.com. Uh, so lots of good places to get information. Jerry, thank you for being thank with you, us Dave. in Valley Talk. Appreciate We're the looking opportunity. forward to having you back again on the show, talking about this and other issues with substance abuse and okay. how we as a society can engage this and maybe make a difference. Hopefully. All right. Thanks. Coming up next, Visiting Angels, and they have an award that's been given to them that they're rather proud of, and we'll be talking to, to Amanda and company here about what Visiting Angels is all about. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Again, don't forget to sign up for Quiznos Taste on Us. You can send me an email address. Uh, send me to my email address, your submission for the prize, davidkgal.com, or call me at... Um, 451 KGAL or 926 KGAL, and we'll put you into the drawing. We'll draw here in about 22 minutes here on KGAL's Valley Talk. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by Regis. Let Regis help you to focus on your business while they take care of your workspace needs. Get two months free on a fully wired and furnished office. Call 1 800 Offices. This is Charles Osgood. Two British designers have come up with a wonderfully low-cost, low-tech, high-impact source of light for a third of the people on Earth. It requires no batteries, no kerosene or fuel of any kind, and there's no running out of what it runs on, which is gravity. Jim Reeves is one of the two creators. So the product consists of the generator ambient light unit. It's shipped in a very robust bag, which takes ballast. You take it out of its bag, you fill this bag with gravel, sand, soil. You attach the bag, you hang the product, and when you lift the bag, and you have your light source. More after this. Businesses, from startups to Fortune 500 firms, have something in common. They're intentional, they focus on success, and they don't get distracted. And many successful businesses have something else in common. They work for a Regis office. Your beautifully furnished, wired Regis office can be ready when you need it, with a receptionist, access to meeting rooms, and state-of-the-art video conferencing, all with no long-term lease. Regis is the new way to work. Call 1-800-OFFICES and get two months free when you mention Osgood. That's 1-800-OFFICES. In this moment, who has your back? An insurance company delivering excellence during your claims process? Auto Owners Insurance has been recognized as highest in customer satisfaction with the auto insurance claims experience five years in a row by J.D. Power & Associates. Let an auto owner's independent insurance agent have your back so when the unthinkable happens, you get the claim service you deserve. For J.D. Power & Associates award information, go to jdpower.com. Find your local independent agent at autoowners.com. The gravity light is designed to sell for around $5. Each three-second pull on the bag produces a half hour of useful light. It's cheaper than solar technology. Co-creator Martin Ritterford can explain that. The trouble with solar technology is that you have to charge a battery with the solar power that you've gained from the sun then use the battery power to power at night. So it was really important to find the cheapest way of supplying reasonable quality light to these people. To these people, the gravity light can be a giant leap forward. Right now, says Jim Reeves, a third of the world's population is off-grid. So you've got large communities across Africa and India and South America and even Northern Europe and into Russia where power is either intermittent or absent. So we want to take a large number of the devices out to the intended end users, get feedback on how the product would perform in the field. It's very different from the conventional solutions that people will be familiar with. 
To them, changing the world is, to use our late colleague Eric Severide's phrase, not so wild a dream. The Osgood File. I'll see you on the television come Sunday morning on CBS. This is Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. Do you suffer from tender, red, swollen, or bleeding gums? Is there a bad taste or odor from your mouth? Or have you noticed any loose teeth or new spaces between them? Then you have infected gums, which could contribute to diabetes or even heart disease. Now there's great news from Dr. Dennis Clark. You see, Dr. Clark's skillful use of laser periodontal therapy has dramatically healed bleeding, swollen gums. Among the hundreds of Mid-Valley laser patients is Michael Hill of Albany. The uh, procedure, very easy, very nice. Um, no problems on my end. My teeth have felt healthy. I don't have the discomfort that I've had all for about the past two to three years. Simply put, gently applied laser light removes bacteria and diseased tissue. This high-tech therapy brings improved health and a fast, easy return to comfortable gums and a normal routine. For a free consultation about the no-cut, no-sew, no-fear solution for infected gums, call the Laser Dentist. Dr. Dennis Clark in Lebanon at 451-1440. That's 451-1440. Hi, this is the Eminent Kid, Mike Mason, inviting you to join me this Friday from 11 till 1 p.m. as K-Show broadcasts live at John and Phil's huge closeout. John and Phil Subaru in Corvallis is the only Subaru dealer in the mid Willamette Valley and has great savings on the best-selling cars in America during John and Phil's huge closeout. You'll find even bigger savings, and I'll have hundreds of dollars in prizes for you to win. So stop in this Friday at John and Phil's Subaru, Highway 99 West at 800 Northwest 5th Street in Corvallis. Radio for the Mid-Valley's Horse Lovers, The Horse Show with Rick Lamb, Sunday mornings at 9 on Smart Talk 1580. Welcome back to Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Glad to have you with us today. They were voted 2013 Best of Home Care by Home Care Pulse, Visiting Angels of the Willamette Valley. And in the studios today on Valley Talk, we have the owner of Visiting Angels, Mark Wang, and uh, Community Relations Specialist, uh, Community Relations Manager, Amanda Burns, here on Valley Talk. Mark, first of all, congratulations on the award. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Who gave the award? Home Care Pulse. Who are they? So, Home Care Pulse is, uh, they are a third-party quality assurance uh, firm. Uh, they're the leaders in their particular industry, um, and they help provide some quality measures for home care agencies across the nation. What is Visiting Angels? What do you do? Are you, you're like... Uh I don't want to use the word of another company, but Mary Maids. In other words, if I just want you to come in and do home, you know, clean up my house, mm -hmm. and I don't have any medical issues, mm -hmm. is Visiting Angels the company for me, or do I need to have a health problem? You know, um, we have folks uh, that have uh, some health issues. We also have folks that, that don't. But mainly what Visiting Angels is about is we're about providing peace of mind uh, for families. We're about helping to relieve stress from families who may be caught in the dilemma of having children that they are caring for, uh, a career, um, different activities they're involved in, and they have aging parents at home that just need a little bit of help. Um, so what we do, um, just like you'd mentioned, we help with some homemaking services, cooking, cleaning, shopping. We can help with personal care, um, things that can help their mom or dad remain safe at home. Visiting Angels, why did you come up with that name? Well, Visiting Angels started in 1991. Uh, we're a franchise, a national franchise. Um, and um, uh, back at that time, there was also an organization called uh, Visiting Nurses, um, which uh, I think is bigger on the East Coast. Um, and so Visiting Angels uh, was, was just a, a uh, it seemed like a really good name um, that kind of helped to speak to the service that we provide. Let's talk to Amanda Burns, Community Relations Manager for Visiting Angels. Talk about the award a little bit. I understand you were judged in 12 different categories and you excelled in all of them? Right. Um, Tell us about that a little bit. So, they, Home Care Pulse calls a total of 10% of our clients and our caregivers each month. And they survey them. They ask um, the clients about our caregivers' professionalism, um, showing up on time, the work that they do. Um, they ask the caregivers about um, talking to the office staff. They're, they're comfortable talking with case management and all that. Um, and the 12 categories are worth e ethics, um, timely, timeliness of caregivers, knowledge of caregivers, compassion of caregivers, appropriate appearance, coordination of schedule, um, the confidence level in staff, effective communications, response to problems, services promised, recommend agency and overall quality assurance and 
to receive the award that we won, you have to be qualified in 10 out of those 12, and we excelled in all 12. And we have the award here in our studio right now. We it's a really nice one. We mm -hmm. actually just got the award in the mail this weekend. <laughs> Rather proud of it, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Mark, what's ahead for Visiting Angels in the future? Uh, well, with Visiting Angels, uh, you know, um, we've just been really blessed with, with the caregivers that we have. Um, and um, for us, uh, it's it's continuing to take care of people here in, in the Willamette Valley, um, helping to make a difference in, in the lives of our families, um, and um, just continue to do the good work that we do. Amanda, why are you involved with Visiting Angels? Um because they're an amazing organization. Um, I actually became a caregiver when I was 18, and I've worked for a couple different agencies, and this is the one that I felt at home at. And um, So what is it about this agency that makes you feel so at home, as you say? I honestly believe that it's um, the owner having such a huge hand in the company. I've never worked for a company where you actually work alongside of the owner, and have the the office staff that you can go to for pretty much anything and feel comfortable talking to them about and now that i've switched positions from a caregiver to being in the office and out in the community it's just it's really nice to be able to promote that what common mistakes do people make when they try to select an in-home care provider maybe they've got some medical issues at homes maybe you know dad is getting along in years and i've got a full-time schedule and i need an angel to come in and help. What what are the, some of the common mistakes people make when they go out and start shopping for this kind of service? Well, you know, I I think sometimes um, it, it's difficult to find information um, out there about uh, the resources available, um, and so some you know if you can um i think something that's really good is is just to be able to find that information earlier on sometimes um if you wait till the last second or when there's a crisis um you know then it's it's uh, you know more difficult to find um uh, the resource that you might be looking for where do people go to find this information? They go to in the old days. They go to the yellow pages. Do they go to the <laughs> to Google or, or the internet? Is that where they're looking for you now? Lots of families do find information out now through Google, uh, through the internet. Um, also, our area agency on aging um, here in uh, Lynn and Benton County. They're uh, just a fantastic resource for information about all the different options that are out there. Is there a two one one connect here? There absolutely okay. is, yes, yes, and that's that's a great service as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, I wanted to mention that um, HomeCarePulse.com, they are now helping refer people to agencies that um, are in the um, area that they're looking for, and, and they go off of um, all their studies that they've done on the companies to refer clients to providers. What are we seeing as the need out there? Are we seeing more elderly parents? Are we seeing more people not wanting to go into maybe a nursing home because of the cost and more families are trying to care for them at home? What's what's mm -hmm. happening out there? You know, we, we've seen definitely uh, a shift in people discovering um, the option of being able to stay at home with some help, uh, with some caregiving help. Um, and so uh, over the past 10 years, we've seen more agencies coming into the field. We've seen the demand uh, for services, in-home care services going up. Um, and um, I think that um, people are also looking for ways to uh, differentiate uh, the different um, options and, and to be able to, to have some concrete measures to see which ones might be doing um, a, a good job. And that's one of the reasons we're just excited um, about the award and, and the, the work that our caregivers are doing. Excuse me. What are, some of the, what are some of the things that should stop people from getting in-home care? In other words, they should go residential or go in, in service or um, where mm -hmm. they're housed in, in like a hospital or a nursing home. What are some sure. of the things that are, would predispose your potential clients from saying, where, where they would call up and say, this is what the service we want, you say, no, you'd be better off in a care facility. Absolutely, you bet. There are certainly cases where, um, in situations where maybe the person's health uh, 
um, may not be stable, may not be, um, it may, you, th- there could be some cognitive issues uh, such as dementia, uh, Alzheimer's, where the person would be safer in a, um, in, in a specific community, a memory care community where they have the staff um, that's, that's equipped and they have the facilities that's uh, better suited um, than to be at home. But then again, what are the advantages of being at home? Well, lots. I think um, for for us, you know, we've seen um, families. Uh, uh, it's it's you know easier to have families around the person, neighbors uh, that they've lived and and grew up with, um, a familiar surrounding in the home they may have lived in for for years and decades. Um, oftentimes, we see that the the person's uh, uh, spiritual health, um, their their mental health is is just better being in an environment that they're comfortable with. Do you see more successful treatment or people recovering to a, to a larger extent when they're in an in-home setting compared to an institutional setting? I, I mm-hmm. believe so. Um, I believe that being at home, you're, you get your family stopping by your kids more often than in a facility. Um, and with having in-home care, it's you know um, someone there to help you with your every need. Um, and then as we're all trying to cut costs on health care, if they can mm-hmm. stay home, it's cheaper, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Often it can, be. It can be, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. This is Valley Talk, and we are talking to uh, Visiting Angels. We're talking to Mark Wang, the owner, and Amanda Burns, Community Relations Manager for Visiting Angels, awarded a 2013 Best of Home Care from Home Care Pulse. More with Mark and Amanda here on Valley Talk in just a moment. Going out to lunch at a nice restaurant can be expensive, and the big portions put you more in the mood for a nap than a productive afternoon. Mama's Fine Italian to the Rescue. The small appetite senior menu is just right. Anyone and everyone is invited to order from the Light Appetites menu for lunch from 11 to 4 p.m. with tasty entrees beginning at only $3.95. Why go hungry or go anywhere else for lunch? Eat healthy, eat light at Mama's. Close Sunday and Monday, so make the most of Tuesday through Friday and join your friends at Mama's for lunch. Dinner only on Saturday. Mama's features charbroiled steaks every day. Make reservations for dinner or pick up a bottle of fine wine. Seating is limited, so please call for reservations. 541-451-5050. That's 451-5050. Mama's Fine Italian and Wine Shop. On West Oak, between Main and 2nd in Lebanon. Across from the Big Blue Napa Auto Parts Building. Jay Farner here from Quicken Loans. We get a lot of tweets from folks that sound just like this. Jay, I bought my home in 2007. Since then, it's gone down in value. Now I owe more on my mortgage than my home is worth. Can I refinance? The answer may very well be yes. Recently, the government announced changes that may allow folks to refinance even if their home has lost value. For example, if you owe $300,000 on your mortgage, but your home's only worth $150,000, Quicken Loans may still be able to help you. Or if your current mortgage rate is higher than 3.99%, you've got to give us a call today at 800-QUICKEN. And for three years in a row now, J.D. Power & Associates has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. So if your current mortgage is higher than 3.99% or if you owe more than your home is worth, call Quicken Loans today at 800-QUICKEN or go to quickenloans.com. For J.D. Power & Associates award information, visit jdpower.com. Important terms and conditions apply. Calls for cost information. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. MLS number 33. When you look out across the Willamette Valley, you'll see plenty of banking choices. Willamette Community Bank is here to give you an option that's pretty unique, like no other, in fact. Hi, this is Sue Kalina, Relationship Manager. Willamette Community Bank provides an alternative to large national and regional banks by offering customized financial services and local decision-making to benefit local people, local families, and local businesses. How many banks can say that? Willamette Community Bank, service like no other. Member FDIC equal housing lender. Business owners and managers, the Lebanon Chamber Biz Expo is Tuesday, April 16th. Now is the time to order quality promotional gifts from Gateway Imprints. For a limited time, pay just $75 for a two-cut or three-by-five banner, or just $40 for 500 glossy single-sided business cards, and save 10% on printing your brochures. For more ideas, check out gatewayimprints.com or look inside the Big Cream and Blue Llama Building at the corner of Ash and Park Streets, Lebanon. Gateway Imprints, imprinting the seeds for success. Beyond the Beltway with Bruce Dumont, Sunday afternoons on News Talk 1580, KGAL. 
This is Valley Talk. Again, welcome to Mark Wang and Amanda Burns. Mark is the owner of Visiting Angels. Amanda is the community relations manager of the company. Awarded 2013 Best of Home Care from Home Care Pulse. Mark and Amanda, first of all, congratulations for that. Thank you. What sets you apart from other companies that provide this, this kind of service? Uh, you know, there's quite a few things that set us apart. We like to say that the clients get to pick their caregivers so that when Mark goes, goes and does an intake, they get to say everything they're looking for in a caregiver, and then we get to go back to the office and go through our roster of caregivers and find that special caregiver just for that one. And um, is what happens from that is I have a little story to tell you. Um, we had a client. Um, she's no longer with us, but she was a very petite lady, and she would had a problem buying pajamas because none of them fit right. So she'd buy a pair, and then they wouldn't fit. She'd buy a pair, and they wouldn't fit. Buy a pair, they wouldn't fit. And it was just the same old thing. And the caregiver would listen to her talk about this quite frequently and decided to do something about it. So she took, the caregiver took the only pair of pajamas that this client had that fit her, measured them, took that measurement home, and made her a pair of pajamas. And then when she was in the process of making it, knew that teddy bears were this client's favorite thing. So she not only made her pajamas, she made her teddy bear pajamas. And um, the last time I spoke with the, the client, those were the only pajamas she would wear because they were made from somebody that actually cared about her. Um, and this is, this is just one example of the relationship between client and caregiver that you get from getting to pick um, your caregiver. So as, you, as maybe people are listening to the show that are, yeah, are a caregiver and they're looking at an agency to work for, what would attract them to working for Visiting Angels? Now, you don't require the caregivers to do that kind of service, I wouldn't think. No, mm -hmm. we don't. But you are attracting ones that do. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we, um, w the, the ones, the caregivers that we really, uh, and, and Daniel, he's our HR person, um, that we really look for are ones that are in this field for the right reasons, not just for a paycheck, not just for something to do. Um, they're ones that have the conviction, um, uh, that, that passion to work with, uh, seniors, um, Oftentimes they've they've cared for their mom or dad. They they've been there. They know what it's like, um, and and we really look for ones that want to do the right things. That's an interesting comment. She, the lady that you were talking about in that story, the the actual care or the love for this person that was expressed is something that really spoke to her to the point where that was those were the only pair of pajamas she would wear. That's kind of interesting to me. How about you? Yeah, it is. It was it was a very unique situation and. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I just want to say, um, you know, you, the the award is not so much about us as, as it is about our caregivers. I mean, this award is really um, based on on the efforts and the accomplishments of all of our uh, caregivers, and we just couldn't be prouder of them. Right. How do they get in contact with visiting angels? Well, um, our, our, we're located in downtown Albany in the tourist market. Um, our number is 541-928-2061. We're also um, on the web at visitingangelsalbany.com. And we also have a Facebook page. Mark and Amanda, thank you for being on the show. And congratulations on your Home Care Pulse Best of Excellence. A 12 out of 12 categories. Way to go. You hit it out of the park. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for thank what you. you do. And thank you for being on the show today. We do want to remind you, coming up tomorrow, it's tax time. We are going to have our enrolled tax agent from H&R Block in the studios uh, tomorrow. And he's going to be talking about taxes and the changes and what we need to be aware of. Also, uh, Tom's Garden Center is going to be moving to new ownership. Travis is buying that. Travis and Tom will be in the studio tomorrow talking. Uh, they'll be in about 11.30 talking about the transfer of ownership. Tom's still going to be involved in some way. We'll talk about that. That's coming up tomorrow on Valley Talk. We'll see you then. In the meantime, have a good day. Locally owned and operated, this is the very independent News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.